Hey, Billy from Permapastures Farm. All right, we're gonna show you the consummate definition of permaculture. In most cases, a lot of people might have different pieces of knowledge, okay? The beauty about permaculture is that it takes it all and puts it together. That's what this video is about today. We're gonna to show you the relationship between simple things like chickens, bees, sheep, trees. What do they all have in common and how can they benefit one another? We've done this video before y'all a while back, but it was at a growth season. It was at a, I think it was in either early summer or late summer. Either way, this is important. And it's, it's really important to explain how all these things work together. Now, here we are, we got bees over here. We got bees over here. We lost a hive, which really ain't that bad considering that most of the people around us lost all of their hives. We lost one. And that's another thing altogether. But here's how this relationship goes. Okay, the grass was a little bit higher than it is right now, especially in front of these bee boxes. Now I wanna be careful and not disturb these guys too much because those guys are nasty. They came from Texas, but they're also the most prolific. Here's what happened. Our sheep down the way came through, they had access to this area. And it happens every single time they have a rotation. They eat the grass down because we do want the grass low in this area. In fact, it would have been better, instead of having these guys so low to the ground, it would have been better to raise them up like Ben and Denise over at Renewed Homestead. In fact, their design is exactly what I wanna replicate when we finally get around to it. And the reason for that being is that all of the things that wanna disturb and destroy these bees, like your mites, like your beetles, like the moths, all those things, Guess what they like? Guess what these guys like? The chickens love to eat those guys, so they help to keep them in balance. And plus, if you have healthy hives, they're going to do a lot to fight it off anyway. But these guys are really, really awesome in eating the things that are going to bug these guys. It's important to also point out that there is a mutualistic, almost a commensal relationship between the bees and the chickens, okay? The bees never mess with them. In fact, all the rotations that we've had, the bull over here, the sheep over here, it's like the bees got the memo. They're like, okay, we know you're here to help, so we're not gonna kill you, okay? And at the same time, it works this way. These chickens are not harmed. They don't eat the bees. If you doubt me, you can literally take a dead, you can take a bunch of dead bees, put them there with the chickens, and they will not eat it. At least not here, they never have. So they have this relationship where they know that each one is there to help and it works absolutely beautiful. So, but this is where the overlay in permaculture, because we do now, I'm not being critical of anybody or calling anybody out because I was this way too. Here's the number one problem as I see it. In Western cultures, we live in a reductionistic world. For example, let's say you have high blood pressure. You go to the doctor, they give you a pill, the blood pressure is gone. But in a lot of other places, especially indigenous cultures around this world, they don't live in a reductionistic world. They live in a world where everything is interconnected and that's exactly what permaculture is. So we don't say we got a mite problem. We don't say we got a beetle problem. We have a lack of chickens problem. You dig? We don't have a grass being too high problem. We have a lack of interaction with our ruminants. That's exactly what it is. So it's a matter of working these things and asking yourself, what relationship do my chickens have with the bees? What relationship do my chickens have with the sheep? What relationship do all of these guys have with each other? And then think about this, okay, another relationship we have up here, and I'm not sure you can see it, is right at the end of that high tunnel up there, we have trees that we just planted last year. Now, because we haven't managed the chickens as perfectly as we'd like, because we haven't clipped their wings, they have been flying over. They get up there and they scratch out the mulch ring. But ask yourself, what relationship does that tree have with your chickens? What relationship does that tree have with your sheep or anything else? Well, let's think about this. Right off the bat, the tree is providing shade for whatever animal may be there. Typically, you don't want your chickens there because they're going to destroy your mulch ring every single time. But all of the fruit that falls off of that tree that goes rotten, that we can't eat, that we can't use, it's gonna to go to these guys or it's gonna to go to the pigs. So there's one basis of that relationship. When we do that chicken tractor on steroids, all of that compost they produce because we do it in very close proximity, not only to these guys, but the trees that are alongside the driveway there, that's our orchard. 
So we can take all of that material that come from the chickens, put it over there on the trees. It is a beautiful, beautiful system. But the number one problem we run into because we live in a reductionistic world is figuring out how to holistically manage it. We're looking at holistic management in a reductionistic world, and that is one of the hardest things to get around. Let's talk about some other relationships that in a reductionistic world, you're never gonna think about. In fact, you're gonna see it as a waste stream. And what that waste stream is, is what comes out the back end of the cows, the sheep, and even the birds. Now, like I said, the cow had been here first the sheep right behind them. And then lo and behold, here we are, isn't that right, bird? So what do they leave behind? They're gonna leave behind their excrement, which is fantastic for the soil. But these are things that would seem like a waste stream in a reductionistic world. So let's think about with the chickens, let's think about their role in that relationship. So the bull came through, they dropped, he dropped a big old patty, okay? The sheep came through. And then about three days later, these guys came through, they go through, they bust up all those patties that come out of the back end of our ruminants. They eat whatever worms are in there. Yeah, it may seem disgusting to you, but that's exactly what happens. They break up the parasite cycle for those animals. So each one helps the other. And then what do they leave behind? Like right here where the chicken tractor was, over the night, of course, there's gonna be a fair amount of poop that falls through, but this thing moves every single day. So it's not a high concentration of nitrogen in just one spot. They left it here, they're gonna leave it there, and I promise you, as time goes on, it's only going to get better. And then think about it also, in terms of your profit margins. Okay, so from this area, let's think about what we're getting. And this chicken seems to be giving me an amen. So if you just do one species grazing going through here, so let's say I just got a beef crop, or let's just say I got a lamb crop, or let's just say I got a chicken crop. Now think about this, the way we're using this land, and the way you ought to consider using yours, is that you get multiple things. Just in this area, practically within arm's roots, reach, think about what you're getting. First of all, you're gonna get a beef crop, or it could be a milk crop out of it, and I'm using crop in a way that I shouldn't be, but you get the point. So we get beef, we get milk, we also get meat from the meat birds if we desire. We also get eggs from these systems. We also get honey out of there. We also get fruit and nuts and berries I didn't even count them all up, but can you? Now, ordinarily, in a reductionistic world, you would only get one, and if you were lucky, you got two. But think of how much you can do and improve the land because we are not in the sustainable business. We're in the regeneration business, okay? That's what I'm talking about. Ain't that right, bird? All right, y'all, here's why I get so excited doing this work. Right here is a black locust that I pretty much pollard. It could have been higher, but I got a bunch of experiments that we'll talk about later on. But that's not what we want to get to today. Reductionism, we want to get rid of that in your farm systems. And I don't care where it is. Down the way, we got the sheep. They're doing their thing. Right behind me, we got the chickens that are about three days behind. Right there on the other side, obviously you got bees. And then what you don't see is back over the hill, we got the bull. So it's the bull, the sheep, the chickens, you get the point. But I also wanna point in the zoning because that's another thing in this reductionistic world. I keep using that word. Find out what it means and find out how you, me, and everybody out there watching this video is a victim of it and how we gotta get ourselves out of it. So when the chickens, whatever they have, let's say it could be in the chicken tractor on steroids. And like I said, we got playlist after playlist for that. Whatever the case me may be, their relationship is very, very close to this orchard that runs basically up and down the driveway. You can see Michelle standing down by part of it. Everything's dormant right now. Everything is dormant right now, so you're not seeing the full effect of it, but you will, so hang loose when spring rolls around. Those chickens interact with this. This interacts with the chickens. The chickens interact with everything works together. Nothing is done in isolation. And that's what not only will make you more efficient because our zoning is impeccable, as I come over here, I don't want to step on the strawberry starts we got out here. We have a, a road, our road, that goes up and down here. Now think about it. In just very close proximity, I can get out of whatever vehicle I'm in, 
I can harvest my fruit, harvest my eggs, even harvest my chickens, and even harvest the sheep and not take 10 steps that way to get it all done. That's also part of it. What drives so many people crazy doing this lifestyle is that you may, because you didn't, you didn't think your design through, and these things by and large can be corrected. So maybe you got your chickens over there because it looked good. You thought it was, it had this, you know, um, this country look to it. And maybe that was the reason you chose it. You got your cows over there. You got your sheep over here. You got your pigs over there. And none of it has any relationship with one another. We have got to get around that thinking, especially at a time in America where things are becoming more expensive and we are all going to have to be more efficient. Let's talk about our structures. Do they work within this design? Absolutely. Right here, we got a high tunnel, okay? And we're doing all kinds of wonderful things inside of it, but there are wonderful things going on the outside of it. So not only are we collecting the water and we're gonna do some pretty cool stuff in the near future regarding all that, but also on the downside of it, Think about how your animals interact with this. So the compost that we produce from these chickens, from those sheep, from that cow, all goes right into here. It also goes into the garden boxes that are in our zone two area around the house. How beautiful a design. And it's all out there. Think of these relationships, y'all. They are magnificent and important. And when you see how they all work together, you get a little less burnout when you realize these relationships. That's what keeps you so excited to do this work. That's going to do it for us, y'all. Check out the Permaculture Pimpcast, the ball in this farm podcast out there with yours truly along with my sidekick. Also, we got bone sauce in stock and we got some other things. So check us out at the website. Need an EMP shield, anything else, harvest right, freeze dry. We got that down below. Till next time, this is Billy from Permapastures Farm, where permaculture is my passion. And you see the reasons why.